So listen up. Today, I have an absolute banger of a Wi-Fi battle for you guys today, and that is because we are actually playing against the legend Xenon. If some of you have been around the Wi-Fi battling community for like over 10 years, his name will ring a bell. He was actually one of the first people I ever battled and posted on my YouTube channel. He was my 150 subscriber special battle. And me and this dude have got some history. We obviously go way back. We probably battled like 50 times throughout the years when I was like a little kid. Uh, but he's back at it on the YouTube game. He is posting regularly on his channel. Go ahead and check out his link in the description. Tell him that I sent you this guy. This guy deserves some love. He's an absolute OG to the game. So today I'm using my kind of psychic terrain armor rouge team one last time before we retire this bad boy. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the match. So he's going to go ahead and lead off with the old clown hair have an ass alligator who obviously sinks into the ground because this game is broken. But I decided to lead off with the boxing glove flamingo. Uh, main idea here was just to be able to get a nice little choice scar fast U-turn on whatever he decides to bring. And then I can kind of, you know, assess a better matchup. Uh, shitty news is that Skeletor Dirge actually is really bad for my team. I don't have a whole lot to handle this thing. And uh, my main objective is just to kind of go into the Ting Lu here. Stan Lee kind of has the best matchup against this thing. I can set up my hazards, and he's not going to be able to really torch Song and set up against me. So he actually ends up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which that is not ideal, because now my cup is about burnt as shit, and I'm not going to be able to do too much with Earthquake. Um, I did want to get this thing in just to kind of prioritize getting my hazards up, because it doesn't look like there's going to be any removal of those, so... Uh, it also does tell me that the Skeledurge is going to be mostly defensive. You do often see these things being defensive sets with stuff like the Will-O-Wisp. They have the unaware ability, so you can't set up against them. And they're just an absolute big old pain in the dick. So, uh, he actually does, he's going to end up switching into the Gyarados here. Does get the Intimidate. Easy play, predicting the Earthquake. However, I just go ahead and throw up some Stealth Rock there. And that is going to be super helpful. However, now I'm looking in the face of fucking death here because Gyarados, it does not matter which generation you're playing against. It's always going to be scary because this thing can Dragon Dance up. It's got Moxie and it's just overall kind of a menace. So I decided to go for a Taunt. The reason for that, because I really do not want this thing to start Dragon Dancing. I know it's going to be faster, but if I could limit to it to like one dance, that's fine. Um, he actually just ends up going right for the Waterfall there. It takes a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage. Um, and also, Gyarados, please keep your mouth open. He looked weird as shit when it was closed. You guys see that for a second? <laughs> um, but yeah, I do end up getting the taunt off. And now at this point, after the waterfall, Stanley's kind of looking useless here. I don't really have a switch into a waterfall. And it's looking like the bull cut's going to have to take the sacrifice here. So I do let him just finish me off with the waterfall. Uh, while that does suck, it does give me a little bit of momentum here against the Gyarados. I, um, I would really prefer to keep Ting Lu around, because like I said, it's kind of my best answer to that Skeledurge, and, you know, that's scary. But Gyarados is over here with his mouth closed, looking goofy as shit, and I now get a free switch into the Teletubby. Uh, so yeah, if you're not familiar with this team already, this team kind of revolves around the Psychic Terrain. It works well with Armor Rouge. I also have the Psychic Seed item on the Grafaya with the Unburdened ability to try to set up. So I'm going to see if I can get some shit going early, but I just feel better if I have the Psychic Terrain up. Uh, another big importance of that is it actually blocks priority moves. So Pokemon like the Low Kicks cannot come in, go for a Sucker Punch, or, you know, first impression shit that those things do. So he actually brings in the Hammer here as I get a nice little Reflect up, which is super helpful, especially against stuff, you know, like a Tinkaton. This thing can do a shit ton of damage, Gigaton Hammer, and I do not want to deal with that. So I also don't really have an easy switch into that thing, so I decide actually just to stay in. I know that a Psychic with the boost from the Terrain is going to hurt anything on his team other than that Low Kicks, of course. Uh, but he actually ends up switching into the Gyarados here. So maybe he was expecting me to switch and try to get a better matchup there. Uh, regardless, my fat ass just stays in here and just fires off some Psychic. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, but I know that I have the Reflect up and I have no reason not to just click Psychic again. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And this time he decides to switch back into Skeletor. So now we get to see kind of what actual bulk this thing is made of here. Um, and keep in mind, I do want to conserve my Ndidi, because this thing is going to be really useful in being able to set it back up that terrain, which is pretty nice for you boy. So, important to note, this thing actually came in, did not take Stealth Rock damage, which absolutely blows for me. It tells me that this thing is actually carrying the Heavy Duty Boots item, uh, meaning you do not take Hazard damage. So, this guy's got his boots on, looking fashionable. He decides to now go for a Slack Off, and I'm thinking, what the hell am I going <laughs> to do about this Skeletor? I swear to God. So, here's my plan. I decide to switch into Flamigo. Um, I know that behind a light screen, I'm relatively safe, and I do want to conserve the Ndidi. So my plan is to basically bring this thing in. Um, I can either force it to switch, or at least try to, or try to get some chip damage to the point where uh, then I can bring in Armor Rouge, and then a you know psychic move with the terrain, it should help out. So I decided to go for the liquidation here, thinking this thing is probably not going to do much, because this thing is defensive, as we've seen. Plus, I'm a fucking Flamigo. So yeah, it does not do very much at all. He actually ends up missing the Will-O-Wisp there. 
Uh, shout out to Willow Miss coming in clutch for you, boy. And now I'm expecting him to probably go for that again. Uh, but I've got a little bit of chip on this thing. If he decides to slack off, that's shitty. But I'm just really kind of working around this thing, seeing what I can do. Um, but he actually ends up just going right for the Torch song. Sings me a nice song here, of course. Doesn't hurt your boy Crimson Chin. With these big-ass shoulder pads, I'm able to take that nicely. Uh, and now I'm thinking I need to try to set up on this thing because this goddamn Skeledurge is going to be is an absolute dick the entire match. So I go for the Endure just to guarantee that I can take an attack here, and I know that he's going to go for the Ghost move. So you'll see that the Endure actually doesn't even come into play, which would have been super nice to get an attack off here, but I needed to play safe if I ended up losing Armor Rouge here. Uh, that puts me in a really bad situation. So I do get that Weakness Policy boost. We're looking nice and strong here. The Light Screen does wear off, which is fine, and unfortunately now the Weirdness disappears from the battlefield. So... The eight turns of the terrain is up, but I'm thinking now I pretty much have to terrestrialize here, go for an expanding force just to maximize uh, my damage here. He knows that that Skeledurge is extremely important, and he's now going to switch pretty much just into Gyarados, who's also carrying some heavy-duty boots. So my Stealth Rock over here ain't doing shit, and it's looking like Ting Lu died for nothing. My guy set up that Stealth Rock, and for what? He worked so goddamn hard setting those up, and then these guys just got their boots on? What kind of boots are these things made of, for real? Anyway, I go for the expanding force here. I Terra for the extra damage, you get that big ol' eye on my head looking like Sauron over here. And this is a scary ass armor rouge to battle against. When I now have, you know, weakness policy boost plus the, you know, double stab expanding force, a lot of shit is gonna die. However, I'm now in a bad position because I don't have my terrain up, meaning he can just go right for some priority. Uh, while I am able to take care of the Gyarados now, he just gets a free switch into low kicks, who can first impression and kill me, or sucker punch if he wants to be fancy. So. Uh, I know that Crimson, still with the weak armor ability and Endure, I can make some shit happen later. So I decide to conserve that bad boy, stick him in the old back pocket, and now I go into the Flamigo. Knowing that I can take pretty much the first impression from this thing and then outspeed with my Choice Scarf, and then either like Brave Bird Close Combat or something like that, he is actually going to go full Crystal on my ass now, making Walter White proud. He actually ends up being just Terra Bug. So going for the extra stab there with the first impression. Honestly, Low Kicks is extremely scary. A lot of the times you will see these things carrying Choice Band first impression, which literally, like, kills everything. So he does actually end up going for that. It doesn't quite knock me out, which is amazing. Luckily, I do resist that. And now I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed, and he can't Sucker Punch if he's Choice Banded. I'm honestly thinking this thing is Choice Banded at this point. Uh, so I'm going to try to play around that knowledge. So he's actually going to switch back into the Skeledurge. However, I do expect this. I go for the U-turn uh, instead of just the damage move there. It obviously does negative damage to this guy. I damn near heal the Skeledurge. But what this does do is provide me at least like a matchup against this. And I'm thinking, okay, I pretty much I need to get back up that Psychic Terrain. And honestly, it's looking like Telly has a pretty solid matchup against this thing. It can pretty much sit there and Torch Song and boost its special attack all day against me. But Telly's been going in on those McDoubles, so I'm actually looking like I'm, pr I'm pretty damn bulky and I can handle this. So this is kind of the best matchup I have here. I'm just going to go for the light screen here just to ensure that I can take attacks from this. And then I can just start firing off some pretty relatively hard-hitting psychics. Uh, he actually goes for the Hex there, potentially expecting the switch. Regardless, uh, you know, I'm, I'm normal type for whatever reason, and that's actually super helpful on this thing. So normal psychic type honestly does come in clutch. Having that resistance to Ghost, this thing only can really Torch Song against me. So uh, now I get the psychic off. He is going to slack off, of course, because this fat ass has also been hitting the McDoubles pretty heavy. And boy, would I love to see this Skeledurge gone. It would make <laughs> my life literally so much easier. Uh, but I'm just going to continue staying in here, going for the Psychic. I have really nothing else or no reason to go for anything else. And he can't really stay in and slack off all day because uh, it's not really going to get you anywhere. Plus, you know, potentially crits and things like that can happen. So I go for one more Psychic here. Uh, as, of course, he did not slack off there. So finally, Skeledurge is gone. And I'm feeling a whole lot better about this matchup. He does have a ton more scary-ass Mons left, like this freaking Low Kicks, who comes in. Uh, the Psychic Terrain is still up, so he can't actually first impression. And while I know Xenon is an absolute, you know, OG to the game, I know he probably knows the, how the Psychic Terrain works. However, I'm just going to stay in and go for a Reflect. Uh, I actually outspeed here, surprisingly, expecting him to potentially go for the Sucker Punch. Unfortunately, he actually clicks Leech Life, which is a great play, because that is going to take care of the Ndidi. Uh, I really did not expect Leech Life there. It makes sense. I mean, it was kind of just the best option for him. Uh, but I do get a Reflect up, and unfortunately now, Telly goes down. So I now have to deal with all the Psychic Terrain left. Um, I can't set it up again, and I really probably should have uh, sacked freaking Flamigo for that. But the game goes on, and I still have a secret weapon in the old back pocket. I bring in E.T., he's ready to phone the fuck home, and I am able to pop the Psychic Seed here. So the reason why I have Psychic Seed on this, while it gives me a special defensive boost, it also activates my Unburden ability, of course. 
So now I have double speed, and I'm thinking this is a perfect boy to set up against. I go for the sword stance here. I know that I'm behind the reflect, so I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And he ends up going for the leech life once again. Uh, that's looking like choice banded damage. That's resisted through a reflect something, and this thing is for sure choice banded. Uh, and now all I can really do here is go for the acrobatics. Um, so I was really hoping he was going to stay in there, but he is actually going to end up switching uh, into the Tinkaton here. So Tinkaton's going to come in, take some Stealth Rock damage, and I'm really hoping uh, that Acrobatics is a two-hit kill here. So judging on that damage, it looks like it could be a potential roll, and the weirdness actually does disappear from the battlefield. So now I have to deal with basically his low kicks being able to get priority. I go for the Acrobatics once more. He lives it on literally two HP. Uh, so I do not get a favorable roll there, and he's able to just smash my ass into the next dimension. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, the Grafai I sweep did not happen exactly how I would have liked it to, so... Tinkaton is over here ruining my day. However, I mean, with the Psychic Terrain gone, he could have just gone right back into low kicks and got the priority and knocked me out, so... Uh, it wasn't really the end of the world. As now I get a free switch into the Flamigo, I just decide to go for the U-turn in case he wants to switch. If he doesn't, that's fine. Uh, but it's looking like the Choice Scarf Flamigo actually could be... Uh, one of my general win conditions here. I'm able to outspeed everything, and I can hit pretty hard if need be. So, I uh, killed that thing with a U-turn, and now I have to go into uh, the Tinkaton of my own. Tooth Fairy comes in, ready to bash some motherfucking teeth in with my big-ass hammer. No Mon is safe when the hammer comes out, except for potentially this thing, especially because my Reflect just wore away. So it's looking like my management of all my utilities here is really kind of coming back to bite me because... Having the Reflect up here would kind of guarantee that I could potentially take an attack from this thing. Uh, the freaking Great Tusk comes in, he actually does activate a nice little physical attack boost, and all I can really do here is click Gigaton Hammer. However, he is actually faster in a headlong rush. It is just going to destroy my ass. So, you know, unfortunately we're not able to harvest any teeth today, so Tooth Fairy does go down. Um, but, the game is now 3-2. to two. He has this thing, he has Electros in the back along with the Low Kicks, and I could potentially win this if I can play my cards right. So, I decide to go into Balrog here, and the main idea is to get some chip damage off on this. As much as I would like to click Brave Bird, I would prefer not to just die to the recoil damage, so instead, I'm gonna actually end up going for the Liquidation here. Uh, I basically just wanna get some chip damage off on this to guarantee that I can kill it with Armor Rouge later, as he actually ends up going for the Stealth Rock, which is an amazing play. Uh, rather than taking care of the threat in front of him, he decides to go for the Stealth Rock knowing now likely dies upon immediately switching in, so... Uh, while he does set that up, I actually know that I'm not, not even fire type anymore, so I'm thinking I actually can switch into that stealth rock once more. And that actually works out perfect for me, because now one more liquidation does take care of the old ass Dawn fan. So, now he decides to go into the Mon we have not seen yet, which is going to be the Electros. This is a obviously very scary Mon, but I'm thinking if I can just get that little bit of chip with the liquidation, uh, I should be able to knock it out with the Armor Rouge. So I go for that liquidation, doesn't do a whole lot, because Electros, again... Uh, as a defensive ass dickhead, and he then finishes me off with a Volt Switch. So, the Volt Switch is going to allow him to only bring in one Pokemon, which is going to be the Low Kicks. And I also know that if he goes for the first impression, I can actually just endure if I can live this Stealth Rock recoil. So, he goes into Low Kicks, of course, last Pokemon left, got a fucking extra antennas on his head, and now, luckily, I turned Crimson into a Psychic type earlier, so I actually do not take enough from the Stealth Rock damage to die. So I live it with 6 HP. Now here's my plan. I can go for an Endure. If he goes for a first impression, uh, he's gonna have to switch, because I'm thinking this thing is Choice Banded. So, I'm, I'm, think, I'm hoping if he doesn't have Sucker Punch, this match could be won. So, I go for the Endure here. That's gonna brace myself to live at 1 HP. He does go for the first impression, which is amazing. And of course, I'm able to live that with 1 HP. Uh, but the main importance is, of course, now this activates my weak armor ability, which is gonna allow me to outspeed this low kicks. And I'm thinking that the win condition for me in this game is if he does not have Sucker Punch. It's looking like this thing has been choice banded all game. Uh, so he is forced to switch, which tells me, yes, he is definitely banded because he cannot stay in in first impression again. And he goes right back into the Electros, which is going to get absolutely obliterated uh, by an armor cannon here, which is amazing. So I just go ahead and Mega Man his ass right into the Shadow Realm. And now it all comes down to me against this low kicks. I can, of course, click Endure once more if he decides to click the first impression. Uh, that's the downfall of going choice banded low kicks. If it if it literally is forced to click first impression, it's the last mon, that's all you can do. So, in comes the final mon, and we can do this, boys. Low kicks comes in, takes some stealth rock damage, and the only thing I can really do here is go for the endure. Just to see if he first impressions, I click endure thinking, please, do not have sucker punch. However, he is just going to end up going for the sucker punch there. So, he choice bans himself into the punch there. I really thought that potentially he didn't have it, 
uh, since he didn't go for it last turn. But now at this point, there's nothing I can really do. I can click Endure all day and make his Sucker Punches fail. Uh, but in the end of the day, he has more HP than me. And that is going to be the end of the match. So that was a super high level match that came right down to the wire. And I'll tell you what, low kicks done got my ass. I really could have played better. If I would have had Psychic Terrain up for those final turns, him not being able to go for a priority move would have ensured the win. Uh, so I definitely had some misplays in that I let the, uh, the Ndidi go down too early. Uh, but regardless, that was a super, super fun match. Uh, Xenon is amazing. Go ahead and check out his channel. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.